while I was compiling my preferences, I came to the conclusion that there is a logic to the sequence of the, the track listing, and I would put it from a penetration into Doja Cat and beyond. Let's go here. Paint the town reds like her skin. It's soft, it's smooth. Demons, wet vagina, fuck the girls is like her muscles. And then with songs like Agora Hills, you're getting into her heart, where she's at. Love life, we're getting more kind of intellectual, mental, from skull and bones to attention to balut and above, we're getting like, like you're going through her. And then she's like looking at herself objectively on a more spiritual way and contextualizing herself and compartmentalizing this point in her life. And also letting you know that she's kind of packaged it up. This is it. And I'm also on this journey. I'm not staying here. You're just riding through. Take a sneak peek if you want. And yeah, so that's why I've named this video like the anatomy of Scarlet, because it's really a penetration into her and beyond a passing through of her at a moment in time. Hello and welcome to Thirst Time. I was driving in my car on Friday night and I was thinking, actually, I have something to say about the album. I'm ready to rank her songs <laughs> like single standalone. They are all excluded from this ranking because they all came out at a separate time in their own way with an accompanying video. So they're their own thing. As I was composing my ideas for this video, I came to realize that there is a coherence to the selections of songs from first to finish that made me take an anatomical approach. I mean, when you think about it, releasing track 14 as your lead single to um, set off the, um, the Scarlet era is quite different. Anyway, I want to put the singles aside because this is not about the singles today. So I've got a list. I'm going to rank this from least favorite to most favorite. So least favorite. And I must give an aside. I understand that this is actually like a capsule, a time capsule. So it's a point in time where I have my least favorite to my most favorite. Right now, I'm really into demons more than I had been before. And so it's always going to change. So disclaimer, this is a capsule in time. Um, so my least favorite is often. So with often, I really love the complexity of the melody and how it works. But I feel like on the album, it's a transition song. And for that reason only, I'm putting it at the bottom. Moving on. So it's second least favorite non-single song on the album is, and it may come as a surprise because I've seen a lot of people really champing this song up and it's Balut. So the reason why I'm ranking Balut quite low is she sounds really bored with fame. And so that's not really an empowering vibe or inspiring me in any way. In terms of the technicalities of the song, she has a fantastic delivery, but yeah, it's not an inspiring song because she's bored. She's bored with the fame. So not much to like there. So after Balut, the next song that I've ranked, this is Ouchies. It would actually be a fantastic first song because it's a really kind of like a hype up song. It's a great song for a party starter, so it's not a song that I dislike. I had to rank something somewhere, so Ouchies went where it went. So after Ouchies comes 97. I love that song. Um, it's cool, it's a bop. I think it's a really good declaration song. I think it's important on the album. I like how Doja Cat needs to keep it low key and not be all like, ha ha, hurrah, wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna be low key and see if you can find my quality. So that's why it's kind of like above the previous ones. But so halfway in between my least favorite to most favorite is Love Life. So like lines that I really like in Love Life is I love it when my fans speak French. We need a song of gratitude. I think it's beautiful. Humming along and the whispering and just the the buzz. Okay, so after Love Life, I'm putting in Can't Wait. Why am I putting in Can't Wait? It's because the sound gives me miseducation of Lauren Hill vibes and I'm there for that completely. And also, it's really great to see the artist Doja Cat in love and how, as a lover, she wants to carry the person that she loves and how she wants to give. I love that. I don't want to call it a masculine side, but that dominant side of Doja Cat, I, I'm really, I'm really into that. And again, as someone that has a French connection, the way she says mon chéri, the way she wants to take you to Paris, I think that's so beautiful. I've chosen Skull and Bones. She's giving Doja Cat in Skull and Bones those 
kind of bells that is ringing in the background. It gives a kind of stoned wonderment, as like you're dazed and you're reflecting about life and meaning. Firstly, it's a great beat. It's unique and it's personal. It really feels homemade. And in this song, we get to know Doja Cat's opinion on her spirituality, on God. I really like getting to know this artist, opening their heart and showing what's inside themselves. What's inside? I like that. I like how we go from the bravado of other extravagant songs to this inside of herself. With lyrics like, suck my dick, clit, tits, I'm giving 666. Peak Doja, don't give a fuck, I'm going there. What I like about this song is she is breaking free from chains that as a woman, she has to appeal to a feminist ideology of um, sisterhood to break the patriarchy and she's just saying, fuck the girls. Whether you take it literally or not is up to you, but I like how she's not giving a fuck about how it's interpreted. She's just saying a fucking thing, and th that's the reason why I think it is a really cool song. Alongside the beat, alongside the energy, and why I'm ranking Fuck the Girl so high, is because it's giving us new doja. Yeah, I love it. Actually, just like the aggression. Love it completely. <laughs> is Wet Vagina. The way this song transitions from Demons, that kind of like wavy kind of sound that's really off-key and eerie, is just giving afro-robotic beat, is how I would describe it. It's one of the songs that spoke to me the most in the beginning. Um, I'm still not, not over that song, so... So, Go Off is quintessential doja. I love the loop. I love the echo, and I love that retrospectiveness of the song. It's showing that she is still Doja. If you've been following Doja for five plus years, you're, she's delivering the same essence, and so you're still getting your feed, and if you are a fan, you need that feed, so it's lovely to still get that juice. It just delivers. So. It's a new position from the front. Silly me, I left the song Gun off the list. Turns out it's my favourite track on the album. It's got Doja Cat written all over it. There's passion, anger and humour all mixed in one. I love it when she's serious and ridiculous but sexy all at the same time. I think the metaphor of a gun is a great statement for sex and power. And the beat hops along nice and chill, pausing and picking itself back up. This song is my fave. I think it will not get tired, no matter how many plays. So, I hope you like this. Thanks for watching. And, um, I don't know, like, can I do another Doja Cat video? Who knows? I mean, I will probably one day. But, like, right now, at this stage in 2023, I really don't know. I feel like I've done it at all. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Stay tuned. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.